And we're live! Welcome to Encounter Roleplay. Welcome to Judge Dredd on the block. Virginia, how are you doing on this fine Friday? I am doing really well. I'm super excited for this. Throw them into the deep end. <laughs> the deepest of ends. How has your week been? It has been busy. Very busy making roleplay games. <laughs> so it's nice to actually play now at the end of the week. <laughs> and welcome back to Cleric of Cord. Kat, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'll be happy when fall is over and allergy season for me goes away. But um, other than that, I'm doing really great. Looking forward to this, getting ready to uh, to play a little bit with uh, some things that I've been cooking up. Well, the Judge Talon's been cooking up. Oh boy. Cooking up is probably very accurate. There was a lot of food involved last week. And the wonderful producer Trav, how are you doing today, sir? I predict that this will be the greatest game of Dread ever. And I'm always right. Hi, I'm Ed Producer Trev. I'm the producer of WebDM. I'm very glad to be here. It's Dread time, baby. Let's rip it up. I love it. And I will be fixing your chroma key very shortly. So hey. keep an eye out for that. Because I think it's going to be pretty magic. Speaking of pretty magic, the Zippy Zippo. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing great. I didn't know I was magic. Can't I'm magic? That. Yeah. I, are you not? Awesome! I'm really excited <laughs> to play. I play Judge Grease. He's a, he's a chimp, not a monkey. Very distinct difference. A little bit bigger. Don't have a tail. But I'm still cute and cuddly, but I'll beat you with a day stick. So there you go. That's a promise. Uh, Virginia, would you like to share with us some of the ways the chat can interact today? Yes, so if you want to get involved, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, first of all, we are going to have another poll in chat at the beginning, which I believe Charlie is going to be keying up. And it's about who our judges meet today. Um, they, you have the choice of meet, well, chat has the choice of whether or not you lovely judges meet a friend that is a foe a foe that is a friend, or a doggo who is a good boy. I love that doggo who is a good boy is an option that I had to put into a poll today for my job. <laughs> that was possibly the best thing ever. So I'm gonna hit that poll and get that going. Um, I joked so, about it with Charlie. <laughs> and yeah. she was like, put it in, it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. And I would like to mention our sponsors today, Cascadia Gaming Supply. They're in the middle of their Kickstarter right now. Travis has a hole in his head, but that is not reflective of Cascadia Gaming Supply. That is reflective of Koma Kiri. Um, <laughs> Cascadia Gaming Supply are making these incredible dice coasters. On one side, you can add a custom logo, art, your class, any of that good stuff, and it's all etched in. And on the other side is, um, it's connected by a magnet, is this dice tray, which holds all your dice. So you can quickly grab that D20, D6, D2, whatever it is, and play. I think it's gonna be an amazing gift if anyone's in the market for a gift for a friend this season, or for uh, even Christmas coming up. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm just going to run the sponsor trailer to tell you all about the other wonderful partners that we have here on Encounter Roleplay. Before we begin today's show, I would like to take some time to remind you about our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds, a virtual tabletop of choice. All of the beautiful maps and roles you see tonight are done using Fantasy Grounds, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer and 40k minis for up to 20% off regular retail price. And Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. Go and check them out at tabletoploot.com. And we return to Freedom Falls, Virginia. Well, let's have a look at who won the poll. Should be in chat right now. Chat has voted for a tie between a foe who is actually a friend 
and a doggo who looks like a good boy and is. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens then. <laughs> um, other than that, don't forget that you can tip the cast here uh, below the video in the Twitch chat is the um, tip menu. Uh, you can get these lovely people some crit successes and crit failures, which are auto successes and auto failures. You can gift everyone here an auto success um, and you can do some of the other awesome stuff like creating an NPC or twist of fate, save somebody from death. Uh, or ultimate power, which means you get to make some real stuff happen and work with me to really shake events up in Freedom Falls. Um, okay. Ultimate power. Ultimate power. <laughs> like there must be a gong or something that plays. <laughs> like... Yeah, I feel like you need some dramatic music there, Charlie. <laughs> uh, I'll work on that for next time. I'll, I'll, I'll have a think about what could go with that. But let's get back to uh, On The Block. I'm very excited today. Yes. So last week, our judges were sent out on the new initiative. Their first task upon reaching the mega block was to find the old city defense area and get that up and running as their base of operations, which they have called the refuge. Upon showing up, they realized it was disused and locked up and eventually managed to get their way in started setting up judge talon cooking up some food and perhaps some other fun things um judge reinhold sat and meditated which led him to meet the medic on the floor above you um Jannar, who gave you a little bit of information about what had been going on in the block and gave you some more info on some graffiti that you had found in the city defense section um, which ended up belonging to a gang called the cage vipers who mostly exist locked away behind bars after a failed blast test on what they call ISO 59, level 59 of the mega block, with a few runners outside that deal with getting goods to and fro. Um, you also had a drugs bust. You found some people who seemed to be taking and supplying a drug that you found out was called Cinemo that appeared to make people hallucinate heavily to the point that the person taking it didn't even realize judge waits was arresting them you had a little bit of a shootout in the room over it and on your way back to drag prisoners back gunfire was heard before judge reinhold saw an explosion hit the refuge and judge waits and judge grease you heard this from a distance and that is where we're going to jump back in. As Judge Reinhold, you watch your newly painted front of City Defence, now the Judge's Stronghold where Judge Talon had painted the shield and the eagle, has just been hit by a large propelled explosive with Judge Talon still inside. I've also been shot, too. You, you have so... also been shot, yes. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm uh, pumping blood, but uh, but I've been shot, and rather than go to the medic, which is where I was heading, when you had a prisoner. The place, I did too, and uh, so I draw, and do I see what just shot the front of the building? You don't. It's come from a level up above, maybe two or three levels up, but because of the high barriers that go around here, you can't see who has caused this from the from where you are at and i've got a perp with me handcuffed and uh i don't remember is this the guy who shot me um i might oh, as well be gosh I'm trying to remember yes i think it might have been it was the the woman that shot you woman that shot um, that's right okay well before i go upstairs and chase this thing down i'm gonna like handcuff her to a pipe or a radiator or something oh wait no it wasn't the woman that shot you it was the woman who dropped everything and didn't end up being ah. shot it was her right <laughs> we're gonna but interrogate yeah, her can... the other two are currently with judge weights and judge grease after having been stunned all right so is the front of the place has just been blown up does that mean i could run in there theoretically I mean, the door is open for you. You can just yeah. go in through the door. 
All right. You know gonna, that it's got it, some kind of metal blast shielding as well on the outside, which was there when you guys got there. It's what covered what would be the window. Okay. But I could get in. There's not a hole blown, like, clear that I could run through. Not in that, like, large front section that would have been the window where you've got the metal plate. Oh, no. okay. All right, cool. Not that you can All see right. anyway. There is dust and flames currently just billowing from that section of the block man okay so i want to take a knee and i'm on the railing on the inside looking up on the the atrium kind of in between everything mm -hmm. right yeah all right i'm gonna take a knee shove my prisoner to the floor put my hand on the back of her neck and uh, get on the radio say uh, judges check in I need a 20 on everybody. So how much damage have I taken on the inside? We'll get to that in just a minute. You don't hear anything on your radio, Talon. It's just static. There's dust, bits of masonry falling. You can see flames. And that's all for about that. All you know is you were standing, probably, you know, taking some stuff from the bags that you'd left. And the next thing you know, you were knocked to the floor and there was an explosion. Judge Waits and Judge Grease, you do get this call from Judge Reinhold shortly after hear, you hear the gunfire and the explosion go off somewhere in the distance. Uh, do, do we want to double back around? Judge Grease, we must answer the call. So Reinhold, uh, Greece and I are safe, making our way back to the refuge. We have prisoners. Advise. Refuge is currently under assault. Uh, cannot locate the uh, source that's above. It's coming from uh, the upper floors, maybe two, three floors above. I'm going to leave uh, the prisoner I have here handcuffed in front the... Uh, front of the building has been compromised but i don't think there's serious structural damage i'm heading upstairs uh i'll uh i'll head up copy that and, uh, Reinhold, back up it's on its way greece will when you say levels you mean buildings or are you talking about like an entirely different floor entirely different floor so you're within this one within this one mega block okay so if he says it's like two or three levels above greece is going to find the uh nearest stairwell because he's the quickest that can climb it because he just doesn't even have to use any of the stairs he'll just jump from uh re uh arm railing to arm railing up the stairwell Okay, I'm going to ask everyone to roll some initiative at this point, just so we can figure out who's doing what, when. Um, so to do that, it is a simple uh, intuition check. If anyone's yeah. got any skills that they think will apply to this that they'd like to add, Does please Does the intuition do. skill apply? Yeah. I also have running. Running could apply, if you've got running as a skill. Okay, so should I take that instead of intuition or in addition? Uh, instead of. Okay. Um, Would perception acrobatics? help? Because... Oh. Uh, acrobatics Would, uh... will definitely help. Okay. And we can only roll up to six dice, correct? Six dice, yeah. A reminder to the cast that thanks to last week's donations, we all have um, critical successes. I believe that was RPG Webby last week, so thank you very much to Sam for that. And they will give you an auto success. Does perception help with initiative? Um, I will let it in this case because you are inside looking at this happening. Okay.
I can't stop bopping to this music. <laughs> You are muted, Travis. We have like a thousand <laughs> windows open. There you uh, are. I was saying it has an escape from New York vibe that I appreciate. I felt like synth was the way to go for dreads this weekend. I felt synth on a Friday was what we needed. Everybody and needs synth. Travis, how many dice would you like to roll? And I'll roll that for you. Four? There we go. And that'll be an 11. So right 11, on. cool. So at the top we have Judge Waits, followed by, oh no, actually, it's one of my guys first. Interesting. Actually, can we roll one more? Cause I have combat precog and I get a plus 1d6 to that. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. That's all right. Hold on, I'm logging in. Hang on, I'm on my way. Here we go. So 12 total. So we have uh, somebody, sorry, Judge Travis. White, and then we have Judge Grease, followed by Judge Talon, um, and uh, Talon and Judge Reinhold at the same time. And my two. Okay. So uh, Judge Grease, you do begin to make your way up the stairs. But Judge Wait, you are the quickest one to act here after getting so, this call. Judge Wait takes the prisoner that Greece had been uh, looking after, as well as her own, who I believe is still unconscious from being stunned into oblivion. And she is actually going to just dump them in a doorway because she knows she's much faster if she runs alone. She'll come back for them later. And she hits the street and she is running, heading for the refuge. Heading, heading to Judge Talon, who was in there, because you never, you never leave your judges alone. We do this together. We're a team, and that's yep. pretty cool. So you can dump them back in the room that you had them in, and secure that door, and start making your way. And I'm gonna say that because you got, you rolled pretty well on that initiative. Um, you just make it out to the edge of that corridor where you can see um, Judge Reinhold. Just you were making your way up to some stairs, I believe, weren't you? Um, you can see the prisoner uh, tied up um, low to some pipes that run up alongside one wall and opposite across where that kind of central barrier is that looks down. You can see the front of the refuge, the smoke starting to clear, but there's still flames licking up the front of the metal. And you can see um, where something has impacted. The door has been forced open and the actual metal at the front that covers where the window would be is slightly concave. And then we have Judge Grease, as you are making your way um, up these stairs, hand railing to hand railing. Um, what else are you doing? Are you just going all the way up? Are you anything else you want to do while you're doing this? Uh, I think uh, while Grease is kind of like going up hand hand, his feet that have opposable uh, digits are going to start loading his lawgiver and start like checking things and making sure uh, everything is good. So he's like, he's going up and he has his feet and he cocks it, checks the uh, ammunition. And what are you setting your lawgiver to? What kind of ammunition? He's, he's going to set it to, I think it is rubber ricochet. Okay. So as you're climbing, you shout that and the, you see the little light flash to tell you that it's switched over to that kind of ammunition. Um, can you just make me a, um, Make me an endurance test. I just want to see how far you managed to get up here. Because obviously there are wonderful rules for this game, by the way, for everyone watching. Uh, if, if you're playing on a grid that let you get really into it. But we aren't playing on a grid, unfortunately. So we're doing a little bit of theatre of the mind with this. So I just want to see how um, far you make it with your, with your endurance. Now, I have an exploit called Natural Climber. Mm -hmm. Would that benefit me 
in any way? Uh, yes. I will say if it doesn't give you like a dice bonus already, then take a 1d6 dice bonus. Okay, because it says chimps gain climbing as a natural movement mode, able to climb their full speed with no checks needed. Okay. Um, so you'll still make it. I just want to see if you push yeah, exactly. further on. So if you want to, so, yeah, that's fine. I yeah, so take check. a take a one d six bonus. All right. Um, did that go through? I don't think so. All right. Must have just missed it. Okay, ten. There you go. Ten. Okay, yeah. Even with using the other your other limbs to um, get your law giver ready, you manage to make it up, literally vaulting, pulling yourself up using that jumping ability you have as well. And you manage how many levels up did you want to go? Uh well he said two or three. So Greece would probably think, okay, Judge Reinhold is going to go up to one level and check it. So Greece is going to go one level above that and check that. Okay, I will kind of say, divide and conquer. Yeah, I will say then that you just make it to the top of that bit of the stairwell um, by the end of your turn. Up okay. next, we have Judge Talon and Judge Reinhold. Who wants to go first? You've both got an equal equal initiative. Oh, ladies first. Oh uh, well, I was going to say that you have the precog, though, Judge Reinhold. So that is All true. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go. So my judgment, you you told me it's either two or three floors up, right? Yeah, that's what you can gather from the direction that it hit at and what you could see. All right, I'm going all the way up three. Going all the way up three floors. I want to try and get on top of them. I want the height advantage without going too far. Okay. I'm going to go up three flights of stairs. Make me an endurance test then as you try to get up here. Right, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Okay. So that's slash die, right? Yep. Uh, Yep, slash die, space, and then 5d6, 46. 18. It's going to be 18. It's not quite enough. Uh, it, it was a demanding benchmark, so that, that is 21. So you weren't far off. Um, you get go to get up there. You get up the second to the second flight, and that's where that ache starts to build in your legs. It's probably been a while since you've really had to chase after a perp like this upstairs um but you do manage to make it to the second floor onto that corridor okay is there anything else you want to do <laughs> uh i'm gonna stick my head out the door on second okay. floor so you come out so when you actually to get out back to the atrium you'll have to walk through a couple of corridors surrounded by rooms but sticking your head out looking down this corridor you can see um there's a couple of people who are rushing into rooms um there's a couple of people who looks like they've opened their doors to see what's going on and upon seeing people coming rushing back between the corridors have shut their doors again i gotta go up i go up another flight of stairs i, I that's what i'm gonna do next round cool judge talon you are still a mist the smoke and the haze of falling masonry having an explosion just gone just have gone off in the front of your new refuge what are you doing uh first thing she's doing is getting up and okay. uh checking her equipment she's got the static on the radio so she didn't hear the call so she's gonna put out a call um Judge Talon to Judge Reinhold, Judge Grease, Judge Waits. Anyone hear me? Hello? It's just static. It's almost ear splitting. It sounds like something is damaged in the helmet in the blast. Luckily, you have the kitchen counter. So you didn't take yes. any immediate hit from it. But your uh, lungs are filled with masonry dust. There is food splattered everywhere. What about the the non-edible soup that she was cooking up. Uh, the the non-edible 
an audible soup that you were cooking up so i imagine you've had it were you cooking it up in something or yeah, it was it was uh, it had been on the back of the stove uh when judge grease and judge talent did a little demonstration for judge reinhold and then was cooling off to be poured into um, containers to be used okay. later you pick yourself so up it would have been dust. on the counter yeah, dust off your uniform and you look at the kitchen counter behind you where the stove is and you can see what I imagine is like a crock pot um, has tipped over a bit, but it looks like it's wedged on top of some bags of groceries. So while you've lost some of the contents, there is a little bit left there. Uh, very carefully setting that back upright. Um, we want to keep this nice and stable. Uh, and um, making sure that there's no risk of immediate fire, explosion, whatever, from within the kitchen. And then uh, we'll uh, secure, the, secure the materials uh, as quickly and as safely as possible, uh, get it into the, its individual containers. Okay. And I was thinking maybe a half a dozen or so, maybe four, uh... between four and a half a dozen. Let's roll for it. Uh, I'm going to say this is okay. going to be a agility because you're trying right. to get this into the containers. There are flames out towards the front of this room, but they haven't quite reached the back here. It looks like it's just impact flames from whatever hits. But you are under pressure trying to pour this stuff into the containers you have prepared for it. So okay. this is going to be uh, challenging. So it's going to be need a 12 or higher. Okay, I do also have skills in explosives, toxicology, and chemistry. Uh, explosives will work here. All right, so that'll give me 66 to roll. Eighteen eyes. Nice. Yeah, you do manage to pour this in very quickly. You still lose a little bit here and there, which you hope that you know isn't going to catch on to anything but i'm going to say that you get so you pass the difficulty by two so i'm going to say that you get four containers of this explosive okay um very quickly going to secure the any uh, spilled chemicals just out of habit that's just a standard safety uh and then we'll pick up her slingshot check that her luggage is still on her hip and start making her way out the front door carefully Okay. This is very cautious. She doesn't know if they're trying to an immediate breach, uh, if that ex if that explosion was a setup for an immediate breach, or if it was uh, a setup for an ambush. So you start. You very quickly grab the nearest tea towel, swiping away as you walk past at any of the chemicals that you've spilled. Um, I don't know why, but I imagine perhaps that you know it gets chucked over in the corner. There's almost a small kind of catch of flame as a little bit of loose liquid hits one of the fires as you walk past um, with your slingshot and you get to the door and there's still smoke outside. The metal fronting is been caved in towards you, but it hasn't broken. And as you look out of the door, it's very difficult to make out. What you do see and here is some gunfire as a muzzle flash goes off on one of the levels above you as you quickly duck back in. There is somebody still out there, but apparently no one immediately on, like, outside of the okay. refuge. Would like to, yeah. uh, as stealth if possible, out and find some cover, try to get a better idea of what's going on above me. Since that's You'll have to do that next is. turn, though, because that's pretty much all your actions for this turn. All right. Um, and then we are on to, ah, a couple of other people going on. So you hear some gunfire, more rounds going off and the pitter pattering of it across the metal. Judge Waits, you can hear this and you can see this um, and you can see it's coming from opposite the um, refuge, somewhere a couple of levels up but you're not quite far enough out to see which one. But you do see the small sparks as bullets hail across the front. But Judge Talon, you are behind the metal plating and you are safe. Um, we're going to go back up to Judge Waits. As you can see, these bullets raining down now. 
she ran like Tom Cruise. So she's got a healthy glisten of sweat as she's going close to the flames, pouring out of the refuge. She hears the bullets and she turns and she's gonna try and back up so that she can see who she needs to shoot. So she'll so push you... back against the railing and if she can't get far enough back, she'll climb up on it to try and get an angle. So it's actually opposite. So if the, the refuge oh, is here, it's actually opposite. So you go running forward, knowing that one of your judges, one of your, you know, your team is still oh, in there despite this hail of bullets and you wait, you wait for the reload as you get closer and as you turn with your back to the refuge and look up, you can just see two people. You can't quite make out their faces from here, but it what looks to be some kind of rifle, um, military in style, the kind of thing that you might expect the city defense to have once used. Just poking up over one of the railings, about three floors up, and you can see they're in the midst of a reload because it's kind of tilted up on angle. You can see the mag coming out. You still got a few split seconds to decide what you want to do. Uh, she'll load her, flick her gun from stun to something more destructive. She wants to aim to destroy the weapon. If she can't, she can't see them, but I think she can see that weapon. She's just going to aim for the weapon because it'll destroy their hands, even if it doesn't destroy the the gun that they're holding. Okay, so um, what I kind of round are you using? I did round, because that's a little brutal, but something okay. strikes like a, re a regular round would probably be enough. Regular round, or you've got armor piercing? Uh, actually, that sounds good. Let's go armor piercing. That that will cut through the, the gun metal. Okay, what make your attack then, Charlie. Okay. Um, so you are making a uh, rage attack is either intuition or agility. Okay. Against their range defense. Which I'm gonna lower because uh, you're going for the gun. Okay, so let's see. My intuition, I'm gonna go intuition three. I also have points and pistols. Yeah, that will go. Um, so that'll bring me up to five dice that I'm rolling in my little dice pool. Uh, 15 versus 15. the range to Let me just have a look. That absolutely will surpass their range defense. Um, so if you want to roll your damage for that, which is going to be for armor piercing, it is... Oh, let me zoom in. I don't have my glasses on. Um, half SE. <laughs> half SE. This is what I, I'm going to very quickly look this up. Okay. Um, so yeah, she's like run of forwards. She eyes that gun. She sees they're reloading and it's like Wild West judge time. You can't hit them. You hit the gun and go from there. I think her eyes and ears are darting around, looking for Grease, looking for Reinhold, trying to see if Talon's around, but she's focusing on neutralizing the threat here. Okay. So they do half, half damage. Okay. So if we go for, ah, half standard execution. There we go. There we uh, go. So it's 2d6 plus two, and then I will half it, but these rounds ignore 10 points of soak. They don't right. even have 10 points of soak, so... Um, so I rolled a, an 8, so that goes to 4. That goes to 4. And let me mark this down here. Where is the... Okay. Yeah, you fire the shot off, and where an ordinary standard execution shot would kind of ping off this gun, it cuts clean through it. You hear the clattering of something above and somebody shouting and swearing. And you can now see somebody who's kind of not quite stood up, but somebody clutching at their hand and the blood down the side of the top of this railing. As it's clear that you've not only gone through the gun, but you clipped them as well. And she shouts out, stop in the name of the law. You shout this out. And are you staying out where you are or do you all oh, very quickly yeah. let you get into some kind of cover no, she is 100 percent staying there she kind of crouches to make herself a small bit smaller but she's waiting because she knows someone's gonna move now and she's waiting for that okay so you back right up against 
uh, the refuge law, uh, lawgiver ready. And we cut over to Judge Grease as you've reached the second floor landing, making your way through that corridor. And you can see it's the same here as Judge Reinhold. A couple of people are looking out. A few people are making their way back to wherever they were in this corridor, to their rooms, to their homes. Um... Hmm. I get on the radio. Hey, hey, right on. This is Ryan Hold, I copy. Uh, did you see the, uh, the perk? Not the one above us. I'm not there yet. All right, all right. I got this. I got. I seen. I seen enough movies. So I go in and I start tapping the day stick on the uh, uh, the wall, and then I start tapping it, making it sound like footsteps walking away. And I hide behind a little corner and I peer out to see if anybody like peeks out to make sure that I'm gone because I'm pretty sure they've seen a judge enter the floor but I'm going to try to see if I can deceive them into thinking that he left but I'm going to hide in a corner because I'm so small I'm just kind of okay. like keep an eye out I like this. So I imagine that you're kind of you're midway down this corridor so you're just starting to get eyes on that bit of the atrium as well and you manage to what i imagine is you actually go up into the lights like you did before because nobody mm -hmm. looks up right and you get the dates to count and you start tapping on the wall um i want you to make me a oh there's so many things that you could do this for i'm gonna say uh intuition intuition and I'll let your, movies, your movie skill yeah. can apply here if you want I, I would I will love to take it. I imagine that you saw this in a film at some point. You're like, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could do it. Seems good. Oh, I just lost. Oh, there it is. Okay. So four. Oh, it didn't go. Four. Ten. Ten. Yeah. You start tapping it and... A couple of people come out of the rooms. Most of them civilians, just looking to see what's going on. Um, you do see somebody come out, however, from one of the other rooms that doesn't look so much like a civilian. And what makes you think this is the fact that he is holding a pistol. And he comes out looking either way with this gun drawn, not seeing a judge gets back in and shuts the door again. Okay. All right. I got this. Uh, we're going to cut down to Judge Reinhold as you're on that second floor landing, basically the opposite side of that to where Judge Grease is. And welcome doing? to Hit. Thank you so much for that subscription. We are playing some Judge Dredd here today, and I think Judge Reynolds is about to kick some ass. So you're on that second floor landing. You can take an action, so you get two actions in a turn. You can get up to the next landing above, or you can get out to the atrium on this floor. Uh, but I still don't know if the fire came from the second or third floor, yeah? Not yet, no. Okay, I'm going to go up one more. Okay, you go up one more flight of stairs, I won't make you roll for it, and you get out onto where the atrium is. And you can see, it's very quickly easy to tell that whatever explosive was set off, was set off on this floor. There is a huge scorch mark in the back wall that's opposite where the refuge is. Like the, and the refuge is probably something. Okay, so the, and the refuge, refuge is, is below me. 
yeah so if this is if you're looking at opposite walls the refuge is this side you're here but a few floors up looking down at the refuge at the refuge yeah uh-huh. so it looks like right. the back blast of something right. against that wall what you also see the level below is what appears to be a man um because you can see the other side of this barrier almost clutching his hand swearing by the looks of it which is probably definitely an offense but also another man who's kind of hunkered down behind that barrier with a rifle there's another rifle that's scattered across the floor as well okay how far so away is the guy with the action. rifle um he'd be within range for your lawgiver if you wanted to shoot off um as long as it, it would have to be a standard um standard or heat seeker probably would be able to hit at that range okay now i'm gonna pull my i'm gonna draw my lawgiver and uh just shout at both of them freeze hands in the air are you just trying to intimidate them yes i want to intimidate okay. them and i want them i don't want to shoot them yet i want okay. to give up uh, make me a charisma test then, and use any skill that might be appropriate. Hmm. Okay, so... I've got a pretty good charisma. It's six, and then we're gonna do... Yeah, we don't have any... Yeah, we're just gonna go perception, so here we go. I have a million, million windows open. Here we go. Time. <laughs> um... Twenty-two. Wow. Yeah, um, that is that is gonna do something. Uh, do me a favor and just roll me. Um, roll me two d six. Okay. Yeah. You shout this at them over the kind of megaphone that's built into your helmet, and you watch as the one with the bloodied hand just kind of looks up in fright. And you can see it's all across the front of his shirt now as he's holding it to him. The other one is so jumpy that he drops the gun he's holding. A round goes off somewhere. Either it was jammed in the gun to begin with, or he slipped his finger on the trigger. And both of them are just sat there looking at you with your lawgiver there and ready, taking aim and just freeze you wonder if perhaps the fact that both of them aren't armed is what's helped with this as one of them has had to look at his his friend bleeding with this hand that's just a mess and then you've come up from seemingly essentially kind of behind them okay I want to grab the scared one by the by a shirt they're the floor below you oh they're below me on the the other side so they're freaking out okay all right i'm gonna get i'm gonna go all the way up against the railing hold the gun on them i've told them to freeze i'm gonna get back on the radio who's on two i need judges on well it's not two though what's the actual floor number above one up from us would be 26. 26. the one above that is 27. They are on 27, you are on 28. I'm on 28. I need judges on 27. Who's got eyes on 27? Okay, so I'm one above judge. So I'm in 29. You're the one below Reinhold. Yeah. Okay, so you went to two. floor two, went... right? Okay. All right. So I'm on 27. Cool. Judge Reinhold, I'm looking up from 25. Wait till reporting. I've got two perps uh, above the uh, uh, refuge. Uh, they've, I've got them uh, at gunpoint, and uh, they've dropped their weapons. But they are one of them is wounded. I need a judge on twenty-seven to apprehend these two, so I can keep moving. So yeah, Judge Reinhold and Judge Waits, you can actually see each other from where you are, because obviously Reinhold, you're over the railing. Um, looking, you know, kind of on the opposite side. Judge Waits is standing backed up against the wall, lawgiver drawn, pointing at to the floor you're talking about. Judge Reinhold, you can move. I have them covered. 
All right, I'm moving to see where this uh, actual shot came from. And I'm going to do exactly that because I'm standing where they fired at the refuge, right? Yeah. All right, and so I want to see a... on, on the wall behind, there is a burn mark that looks like the back blast from something. From the bazooka. So they're using bazookas, you know, uh, was that a stinger? Some sort of surface to air thing with the exhaust out the back. Heavy weaponry. We haven't been here 20 minutes and they're shooting rockets at us. Uh, I want to give a very thorough search of this area where they clearly fired from. Spent shell casings, cigarette butts, anything. Okay. Since you've got them apprehended, I'm going to drop us out of initiative. So, Judge Reinhold, you do. You begin to do a sweep of the floor. Uh, Judge Talon, what are you doing? You've heard Judge Waits come up, take a shot, and presumably what Waits said over the radio to Judge Reinhold was the smoke is clearing now, and as you look out, Judge Waits is there, back up against the refuge. You are ready and loaded with your explosive. I look at Judge Waits and um, tap my ear. The, my helmet's not working. You know, tap my ear and shake my head. It's not working. Um, and then kind of slide it back just a little bit. What's the situation? And just the eyes are scanning. They're not looking at Waits, but they're just kind of scanning up and down or around. We got at least two on floor 27. Reinhold is above and moving possibly more greece is also on the move we have three already in custody not related to incident here at the refuge what is your what status judge talon i'm i'm fine what do we have the ones that uh fired the explosives where did that come from judge reinhold is in pursuit believed on floor 29 28. The refuge. I can count. Refuge is not secure. I will stay here and uh, guard this because I'm not leaving the refuge where anybody can get into it. We can't. It's unsec it's unsecurable at the moment. So, Talon, um, I'll stay here. Keep this secure uh, if you need to go help him. Cannot move until these two are under hand. Which two? And she'll indicate the injured party and their friend. So I imagine they're kind of like... Up Pretty on much, them. yeah. <laughs> Floor 27. Okay, okay so, so... Please report in. I, I think at that point, Bristol. Judge Talon... Sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. I was going to say, at, at that point, Judge Talon would be going, Code 2, Assault, Assault of a Judge, 10 years ISO. Code 2, Assault, Section 2, co Assault on a Citizen, 5 years ISO. We have Ill Code 8, Section 2, Illegal Experimentation, 10 years ISO. And it just starts reading down all of these codes. Sentence, judges? I imagine Judge Talon reading this out, out loud over the megaphone, which still works on your helmet, to these two perps who are up there, just their faces falling as years get added in ISO cubes. Um, so Judge Waits and Judge Talon, are you both waiting here for now? Uh, yeah, Judge Waits is going to hold until she hears from Greece, who I am imagining isn't going to be replying, but she doesn't know that. Yeah, yeah. and Judge Talon um, is holding as well, waiting to, if, if those two guys move, she's gonna launch um, okay so you're poised and ready judge waits it's at this point you start to feel now the adrenaline has gone you start to feel a little bit woozy just a little bit but you're aware of it you feel a bit heavier a bit slower judge, judge Greece. oh sorry go on charlie waits kind of takes a breath and turns to Talon. Do you have them covered, Talon? Do you believe that if they moved, you could execute them? I do, and I will. Good. And Waits, in an apparent about turn, is going to run for the stairs because she needs to go and get to someone quick. you still got those prisoners back in the room. 
that yeah, you she's, locked them in. Yeah, she's moving up towards the other judges as well. Running okay. in the completely opposite direction is probably not her best bet. So, well, she's going. Those two okay. prisoners are cute, correct? The first two, yeah. Okay. So the two that we got last week are locked up back in their house, but that's down the block. She's going to progress upwards because it's less questionable than suddenly running down the block in the other direction. Okay, so you start making your way up to that level. Judge Grease, you are still yes. hiding up in the pipes and the lights of this mega block corridor after having watched somebody come out of their room with a handgun. See no judge and slip back inside. Uh, Grease is going to go and pull the same trick that he pulled on that poor lad a couple, uh, couple hours ago. He's going to go over to the, um, the door and he's going to knock on it. But as soon as he knocks on it, he's going to climb up onto the top of the doorway and kind of hold himself to see if somebody comes out. I imagine you do this with your day stick, so you've got that reach and you mm -hmm. can stay nice and hidden, but you knock with your day stick on there, flick it back and hold on. And it's a moment before there's anything and then there's a click. The sound of locks being undone. The door opens. A man steps out, holding a handgun at his side and looks down the corridor. Boys? As soon as he says boys, Grease is going to let out a primate screech as he drops down onto this uh, perp and try to get him into a chokehold because he's a chimp he's not like he's not like he's gonna bring him down but he's gonna put a monkey on his back okay you scream jump down he doesn't know where to look he's waving his arms in the air he can't even get the gun to you know point in the right direction as you're trying to put him in a chokehold so this is going to be opposed uh, and this is going to be strength opposition you can use agility if you like um, but okay. we're basically going to roll against each other. Uh, let's have a look. Um, what is this, guys? Strength. I'm going to do brawling, because I think the act of putting somebody in a chokehold. Okay. Um, okay, so agility with brawling. Five dice, 23. 23. Oof. Yeah, you get him in that chokehold and you get him good. Um, that moment of confusion and the high-pitched scream is enough. And you've got the extra limbs to play with here as well. And you manage to wrap a couple around him. And he's throwing himself everywhere because you're kind of on his shoulders and neck. He hasn't even thought to pull the gun up to try and shoot. He lets a couple of shots off in the air. You're not phased by this. You're a judge. You've heard gunshots. Um, but you are, like, tackling this guy. He now can't... I also imagine, you know, like, hands over eyes and all sorts. Um, oh, he's, he's, he's got him, like, in a sleeper hold. He's plying pressure onto that artery, trying to put, put him out. Yeah, you, you do this, and he thrashes around. And it takes a good couple of minutes if you happen to hold on. But slowly, he slumps against the wall, slides down it, and he's at your feet unconscious. The gun he clatters to the floor. Grease takes his two fingers, puts it in his nostrils, drags him inside of his apartment by his nose. Okay. Close the door. Shut the door. You're standing in a fairly grubby apartment that's got a couple of rooms that lead off to it. And in the corner of this apartment is a, what looks to be an ammo box sticking out the top some kind of it's not standard ammunition for anything it looks very jury rigged hmm. 
it's a small object about this big about that tall about this thick and it looks like it's a a piece of pipe that's had something pushed into it there's like duct tape having known judge talon this looks like an improvised explosive Grease is going to go over and he's going to start taking it apart very carefully and seeing if he could just disassemble the pieces. It's fairly easy to do. You can kind of just, you pull out what would be the, um, the explosive material and without it actually being fired through something, you gather there's not too much risk here once you've removed it from anything that could set it off. Judge Reinhold, you're currently sweeping the floor. Um, Conducting my looking? crime scene investigation. I'm primarily looking for uh, boot prints, boot scuffs, uh, you know, anything showing which way they went after uh, firing on uh, a uh, judge facility. Thank you very much. Okay, make me an intuition check. And if you've got uh, perception, that'll apply here. Too. All right, so that's eight, and then I add perception, right? Okay. Yeah. Thirty-six. Oh, you'd be capped at sixty-six there. Oh, it stops at six. It stops at six because that's how many grades you've got. Got it. Eighteen. Ooh. 18, yeah. You um, start having a look around. You start at that blast point, and it is the blast from something that you would imagine would be fired onto the shoulder. And what you do follow is a small trail of what looks to be a little bit of blood, perhaps from the impact catching on something, but also the boot prints of that kind of almost soot-like material that kind of coats this back wall. Oh. And you follow them round and it looks like somebody moved at pace and you do eventually lose them, but it looks like they went down the stairs opposite to the ones that you came up. So it's the two guys that I, that I was holding up and he's bleeding because the rocket hurt his hand. Uh, no, you imagine that those two guys, they have, they already had guns. This is somebody ah, else. Somebody else. All right. And in I'm fact, if follow Judge... It. Yeah. You follow it, and you... The only place you can head down is the stairs. And you actually end up, although you don't know it right now, on the same level as Judge Grease. Right. And you follow the corridor round, and then you do find Judge Grease. Did you lock the door to the apartment? Uh, he closed it. You closed and he, it. And he locked it. Because okay. now it's him and the perp. Right. So, you don't, sorry, you don't see Judge Grease. What you see is a corridor. There's a bullet hole. Um, a couple of bullet holes in the wall. And what looks to be a handgun. Just lying there on the floor outside of an apartment. All right, I walk up and knock like the cops on the door. It's Judge, no open up. Uh, no, the triclops. He's just gonna try to take this guy in. We have no proof whether or not uh, whether or not this is the guy. This guy could probably just have a stash of ammo. Uh, doesn't respond. There's no answer from the room. Judge Grace, what are you doing now you're in here? You've you've taken apart this explosive. There's a couple of other doors that lead off of this apartment as well. And this man is still unconscious on the floor. He starts searching for identification of the guy, but as well as any tattoos or any markings around the house that match some of the graffiti that we saw plastered around our level. Okay. You can't do a full check of this man's body for tattoos, 
because uh, obviously you'd have to strip him entirely. But checking the usual places you'd expect, the neck, the face, the back of the head, uh, the hands and the forearms, you find some tattoos, but none of them look gang-related that you can see. Um, searching around the house, it's just grubby. There's no real like graffiti or spray paint in here. Um, you do find a few what look to be betting slips of some kind, although they don't look official in any way, shape or form. They look handwritten um, for various amounts of credits, some ranging in the tens, there's one or two ranging in the hundreds. Um, they all look fairly recent, but past today's, uh, like before today's date. Um, there's no establishment listed on there. Um, in one of the so, other rooms, you okay. do find what looks to be a large pipe that's had a handle fixed to it. Like a bat? Not like a bat, like a, a tube that's had a handle mm -hmm. fixed to it. And there's some other stuff kind of strapped on. Um, it looks like it's been hastily stashed in here, and you can see that around one end at the back, it's blackened. The same way it would be if you held something over a flame. Oh. Okay. Uh, just from handling it, and handling the explosive, does it look like the explosive goes into that? Quite possibly, yes. If you actually pick it up or touch it, it's slightly warm to the touch. Okay. Uh, Grease is going to go over to whatever has like a, a water tap. He's going to fill up a glass. He's going to walk over to the, the perp. He's going to put his, uh, his feet around the perp's neck and kind of like sit on his chest and he's going to pour the water on the perp trying to wake him up and if if, if the water doesn't wake him up he smacks him with the uh, foot okay just run hold as you're outside you get no response from the inside here but then you hear a couple of doors open and close the light sound of running water and what sounds like water hitting flesh just very faintly from the other side of the door if you're listening at it. And Judge Grease, you do start pouring this water and the man begins to shake awake. And when you empty the glass onto him, you slap him with the foot and his eyes go wide. And he goes scrambling around, looking for the gun that he no longer has. Who are I? Get and he tries reaching for you to grab at you. But he's still kind mm. of half dazed. Um, he's disorientated. Just Reinhold, Greece you can hear his... a struggle from the other side of the door. Grease takes there a, a foot number... and smacks it. <laughs> is there okay. a number on this unit? Is there like a like an apartment number? There is not. It looks like it's been removed. Alright, I'm just gonna hit the radio really fast. Uh, this is Reinhold. I'm on 2-7. Uh, I'm up directly above the refuge. We've got a, a uh, unmarked apartment number. And uh, I'm going in. And I turn off the radio and I kick that door down. You kick the door down to find Judge Grease uh, in not so much of a struggle, but what look at the moment this man's kind of doing it, waving his hands around while Judge Grease smacks him in the face with his foot. And that's what we're going to cut over to Judge Waits, who's currently making her way upstairs. And you go up these flights of stairs. Just like they taught you in training, you know, still sensibly with your lawgiver out, checking the corners as you go up. And you reach the floor where those two pups are. And she'll look along the row, just making sure there are no additional pups out of sight that have moved in after Reinhold moved on. And if there are none, she'll move up to them and give a signal to Talon to say that she's got them covered. Yeah. Judge Talon, you can see Judge Waits appear from the corridor. Uh, and Judge Waits, 
you can see one of the perps, the one whose gun you shot, is currently pale in the face, seeping blood from his hand, um, wailing and muttering, slumped up against this the side of the barrier for support. Um, as the other one is just has been standing here the whole time with his hands raised, he hasn't moved them, and you can see his arms shaking. As it's almost like a stress position as he's been stood this way for a good few minutes now. And she's going to yell at him to get down on the ground, to get his face into the ground, to be facing the ground and on the ground, and not to move from the ground until she gives him permission. And just basically yelling and bombarding him with the order until he moves. Yeah, and he does do that. And all you can hear him saying is just F over and over again. As he's like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. God, why did I do this? You know, and his mate is is looking at you like, I would love to get down on the ground, but he's in so much pain that like, this is all he can do is like hold mm -hmm. himself up here. But the other and one does get down on the ground as he's told. And she'll yell to the other one, you don't move, you stay exactly where you are, you get down on the ground and she's gonna move in. And what she'll do is be close to the one that's on the ground, but blocking their view of the bleeding guy. Okay. And she'll get really close to the guy and kind of get a hold of his clothing, the back of his neck. And then with the other hand, bring his bleeding hands to her mouth and her eyes go dark as she looks at him. And it's a murderous glint of don't move, don't say anything. And I imagine that you're, you're crouched ahead. down a little bit here, like knee on the mm -hmm. back of the other one. So that you can't you can't be seen by Judge Talon from where you, yeah. from where she is. Yeah, you bring this to your mouth, and he is so limp and so pale, and his he goes even whiter than he was before. It's like he doesn't know what to do. He is shaking and terrified, and the other one is just like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please, I just you know he can't even talk. It's like he's having he's in a moment of panic as you drink this blood and judge talon you see um judge waits ordering these perps down and what you imagine she's doing is securing them now that one of them is on the ground the other one is standing there just a look of fright and shock and judge waits you stop feeling so lightheaded so weak fuzzy as you drink and eventually you can tell it's enough as you pull the hand away from your mouth but you now have got red all down the front of your face all down the front of your uniform as well and she'll violently jerk the guy so that he falls from view and is down on the ground with the other and i imagine we have like cable ties because she's used up her handcuffs but we've got something like that yeah. and she'll just cable tie the pair of them and begin basically doing the their judgment, their sentence, and she'll do it over open cons so the rest of the judges know what's happened. And her what helmet just gets pulled all the way down <laughs> over yeah. her face. And what sentence do you give them both? Uh, she sentences them both to 40 in the ISOs for attempted murder of judges, the same as she had given to the woman that had pulled a gun on Ryan Hold okay and i imagine you unless you want to take any of them in for questioning you call dispatch to have a a wagon yeah dispatch. she just insta calls dispatch they've got someone else running around she's pretty sure greece hasn't called in just right get them booked get it moved on okay you call dispatch they tell you that a wagon's already been dispatched for the um the other two that are coming to be collected so you can quite easily take them and just fling them in that room if you want with the rest of them that are waiting to be picked up. Um, Judge Talon, what are you doing? You can see Judge Waits has now got these perps under control. You've overheard, uh, you haven't overheard on the radio because your radio is broken at the moment, but you are no longer in danger, it seems, immediately. Uh, the, the next step is uh, securing the uh, refuge so examining the damage, seeing one, uh, trying to determine what type of explosives were used, uh, because that's evidence, 
and then clearing rubble and seeing how to best secure the refuge so that the door closes properly that the uh is the window uh plate metal covering i'm gonna hold um what will withstand another attack that type of thing so that's all getting cleared up what meanwhile still monitoring this hallway and uh keeping sure. an eye out make me a logic test and you can use your explosives skill if you've got one um okay. let's have a look and and see if you can work out what kind of explosive this is Sixteen. Nice. Yeah, this looks like it's definitely improvised. Um, it looks like Especially. it's kind of almost like a, a homemade propelled grenade. It would have been shot out of something. Um, and essentially what made the dent was the force that was generated when it hit. Probably um, one or two of these fired in a very short space of time. One hitting the front and one coming through the front door. Do I know if I know I can't receive, I can't send or receive. So, uh, on them, I think on the megaphone, uh, Judge Talon will step out because it's the only way uh, she really has to communicate with the other judges. And we'll start reciting the, the code again for um, I illegal experimentation, uh, explosives, uh, construction of weapons of mass blood suction, uh, just everything that uh, they can, she can come up with smoking in public noise annoyance um so all of that and just through the megaphone so that every uh, everybody in the block can hear it and the other judges can hear it letting them know that's what she's found for the uh yeah and it can be heard as well and you can see the few people that have kind of come out to see what's going on especially on some levels below are just watching you list this off and there's whispers and there's talk and judge grace and judge reinhold judge grace what are you doing as you hear reinhold over the radio that he's coming in uh grace is going to take one of his feet and he's going to press it against the perp's head and he's gonna like bend down and bare his teeth there's that row of really sharp teeth that chimps have so uh why'd you do it It was a, just, just the money, man. It, it was all about the money. I, it's not nothing against you or, or, or judges. It was, it was just the money. And Judge Reinhold, you can hear somebody the other side as you kick this door in. Is what I imagine you're doing. Oh yeah, big time. You kick, you kick the door in. Judge Grease is bearing down. Probably the most terrifying you've ever seen. This chimp judge teeth bared as this guy is shaking and all he's saying is I, I just I just did it for the money I don't have anything against the judges uh, I just it was all for the money that's all it was it was it was just a bet that's all and I see him holding this water glass and I noticed that the uh, perp on the floor is is wet and there's water everywhere yeah <laughs> ah judge grease excellent I'm going to take back some of the things I've uh, said about you. Use, uh, waterboarding the uh, subject has uh, clearly been very effective uh, here. What? What else have you gleaned here? Well, this, uh, this, what's your name? You can see he's, he's trying to think up a name. You can see the lies in the eyes as he tries to come up as, with something. As soon as he sees that, uh, Grease is going to take his foot thumb and he's going to jam it into the kid's eyes. I assume he's like a kid, young, young human. And uh, he's a little he's gonna... bit older than the other two perps. He looks like he's perhaps okay. in his uh, like late 20s, early 30s. Okay. All right. Ah, uh -uh. no. No, no lies, no lies. We caught you. Now this can still end really bad. And he 
goes over and he whispers to his lawgiver, uh, high explosive. And he <laughs> points it down at the perp. This can go really bad. You <laughs> shot at my friends. Well, you shot one of my friends. You know where like... I'm from? That gets a bullet in your head. But I'm nice. I'm nice, Grease. I'm going to give you a chance of redemption. You like redemption, don't you, Spud? Y y yes, ju Judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, Judge Grease, not the explosive rounds. You've flown right off the handle. This isn't the Judge Grease I know. <laughs> I know. It's such a f blatant change. All right. You've this thrown is... regulations right out the window. You've gone crazy. If I were Thank the you. subject, so... I would definitely tell them what's going on. Now! They call me Slip. They, they, they call me Slip. Oh. That's what I'm known by. All right. Slip. Here's what's going to happen. I caught you fair and square. You got your ass handed to you by a chimp. You s sure. you hairless skin bags think that you can take us apes on? Mm, mm, I don't think that's true. You got your ass handed to you by a chimp. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to take you downtown. Now we can do this all silent and uh, you don't get blown kind of uh, way. Or we can make it a big to do and everybody knows that you talk to some judges. You, you... How do you want to play this? You're going to send me to ice cubes, aren't you? How many years am I looking at, Judge? Just, I swear, it, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't anything personal. It was just for the money. That's all. That's, that's all. That, look, look, look at me. I'm a chimp judge. I know what it's like, okay? I'm going to tell you something. I can cut a deal. I can send you to the ISO cubes. You got to do something for me. And my friends. They'll kill me, man. If I tell you anything, I'm, I'm dead. And then he lets out like the loudest chimp screech and fires into another room within a high explosive round. Make me a charisma check. Room. Make me a charisma check. I'm going to give you a d6 bonus to this. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to put uh, pistols because I'm firing. Yeah. 17. The high explosive round goes off and wrecks whatever room you have just fired into, presumably a bedroom of some kind. He whimpers beneath you. He places but, the gun. Uh, and right, you uh, you think that I won't? Uh, yeah, sure, 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 okay, 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 just, yeah. He can't even Grace, talk now. What the now. hell is the matter with you? Um, Judge Wait is just talent. You hear a small explosion off somewhere on one of the upper floors. Especially you, Judge Waits, as you're not actually too far from where these guys are. Um, but he does agree to go with you. You do manage to bring him back to the refuge. And Judge Talon has managed to secure the door. It's taken you a little bit of heating up some water to heat the door. And, you know, the same way that you kind of do for cars with some kind of suction. But you've got your tools with you. Um, so the door does close and your other perps have been picked up by the wagon. You've got your slightly wrecked out. It's not completely destroyed. It's more the fire and the impact than anything than like complete collateral damage. But you do have this, this one perp slip in the city defense base. You're sitting there shaking. He's wet, but only across the top half from the shoulders upwards for some reason. Uh, he's got a huge bruise across the base of his neck now as well. I mean, things happen. 
as he uh, sat there fell. looking at all of you. Terrified. Hey. Is this our budding chemist? Yeah. And he pulls out the dis- disarmed, disassembled pipe bomb RPG and puts it on the they I found that in his apartment. Ah. And then he pulls out the IED RPG launcher and puts it on the table. I found that still warm to the touch. Now, I'm just a chimp. But if I had to put two and two together, I would say that this, this uh, boy, uh, was our uh, our demolition man. Ah. His name is Slip, which is a women's undergarment. No, thank they, you. They call me that because of the Judge. betting. And he realizes he's misspoke and sinks back in the seat again as he looks at the four of you. He, Grease, like, hops up on the table and he sits right in f- front of uh, Slip. I'm going to call you Spud. As you jump You're not up, he's Slip like. Anymore. <laughs> you Spud. You're like a potato. You belong in the ground. Well, Slip but is just also. Just like potatoes, you could be useful. Slip is also what happens when you step on something liquid on the floor, isn't that? Fall down, go boom. Oh, boom. No, they, they just call me that. I've had things the... that fall down and go boom. I mean. Just like you, uh, Slip. They call me that because of the betting. It's not because I'm clumsy or anything. Care. Nope. Wait, wait, You're wait, focusing wait, 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 on wait, wait, the wait. wrong thing here, Slip. What betting? What betting? In the oh, arcade? Kind of... Where else are you going to bet in, the... in Freedom Falls? Yeah, in Tell the arcade. Tell us about the arcade. You don't know about the... Uh... Well, you know, they've got all sorts up there. You can watch the Tri-D and bet on that. You can bet on the... Well, they, they got like an, an aggro drone, which you guys would know. Aggro drones are places, uh, they're normally like whole centers within Mega City 1, where you can basically go and watch robots fight, or better yet, go and beat up some robots yourself. But they are legalized, um, specially run for this purpose so that people don't get, you know, murdered. It's like, they've got like an, an aggro drone like thing up there. Sometimes we put bets on that. You know, all all sorts. There's um, like uh, Shuggy, which is basically pool. Uh, There's, you know. Oh, you know, you said something very, very interesting when I had you on the ground. You did it for the money and you did it for the bet. Is somebody betting on the death of judges? Uh, I I mean, some people do. I'm not saying I'm one of them. I, I think this is just a whole miscommunication. So this is what's going to happen. You're going to feed us some information. And maybe I can... Uh, uh, Reinhold, what's the uh, average... What's the maximum time can we uh, give him for uh, attacking... A judge facility. In addition to illegal gambling and collaboration in the potential assassination of multiple judges and defiance of the law. See, along I'm a, with I'm a nice little chimp. I'm nice. Let's say, let's say we give you 120 years in ISO just for that. You just watch as his eyes go wide. You do be dead. Into his lap. Tell you what. It wasn't worth this much. It wasn't worth this much. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. Here, this is what's going to happen. 
Instead of sending you to the ISO cubes, we're going to have you start working off those years. Working for me. I mean, us. Wait, slicks like, questioningly at Judge Grease. This is not protocol. <laughs> like, like an informant. Yeah, like an informant. You give us good information, we keep the peace around here. You start working off your years, and maybe by the time all said and done, you're just going to have to take 30 years in that ISO cube. They're going to kill me, though. If they know. Here's the thing. Spud. You feed us information, or I feed you this, and then you fall down a long way, and you'll go, boom. Ooh. Or, you know, we could just let you walk right out those doors. Judge Grease, mm -hmm. Judge Talon, I shall go and make sure Dispatch have collected our other assailants. And she's like, I'm going to leave before I hear any more of this. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Waits leaves and Slip just kind of looks into his lap. He's thinking about his choices. Like, so right. We can let you go out the front door. But how, how long do you think you're going to last out there, really? Look, we chimps, we hoot, and we we hoot. Everybody hears. The, the cage vipers all pay good money for for judges. Oh, okay. They're, they're not they're oh. not bothered about about the bodies. Not like the other ones. Not like the anti militia. But they like the equipment. Apparently they're working on some way to make your gun things work for them. Apparently they blow people up if you're not meant to be using them. I, I don't know. All I no, know I, is, is there was a bet on about, about, about taking out the new judges on the block. So me and a couple of boys thought we'd take on the bet. Maybe we get some equipment. We get some money from it. You know, and if... It didn't go right, and maybe one of you did get killed, then, you know, maybe the anti-militia would pay for the bodies. But we weren't actually trying to kill you. We just wanted some of your stuff. We hope you drop it in the... So, so the Cage Vipers are buying Judge Tech, and the anti-militia are taking Judge Bodies. Do you know why the anti-militia are taking bodies? keeps the judges out they pay good money for a dead judge okay all right see spud we we're coming to an understanding you and me you know what 119 years and 11 months that's how nice i am but the, the it, it, they're all up in the arcade that's where everything goes down Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to let you out the back. But you're going to be... You're going to be... My... Informant. And he pulls out this, uh... This little communicator. This communicator... Will contact me directly. You hear of any more of this illegal gambling on judge life... Or any type of shipment of judge gear being sold, you you're gonna call me. We're gonna come. We're gonna squash it, and maybe you'll work off a couple months of your hundred and nineteen years and eleven months. Uh, uh, oh, all right. Yeah. See, Sh I. You know what my favorite films are, Spud? Underdog films. You know, the film where the hero, you know, maybe he made a bad decision. But by the end, he's, he's a hero. You want to be a hero, right, Spud? Yeah. Then you don't fuck us. Don't fuck us, we don't fuck you. 
You you look uh, really tired, Spud. That that uh that doorknob bruise on your neck doesn't look too good. It We're gonna let you out the back. Touches it. You can see he's now just nodding. He's just in panic and fright. He just wants out. So he's just nodding along with whatever you say. All he knows is he's not going to an ISO cube yet. And you do. You let him out of the back. And he disappears off. But you don't have Somebody's a lead. Somebody's going to fingers with this stuff. You have a lead. The arcade. What was described to you as the red light district of the mega block. And Judge Waits will highlight this to Judge Reinhold through the the microphone comms and the, her helmet as she paces the block outside. Judge Reinhold, you were correct. We should visit the arcade. Yeah, that's the next big one. I'm afraid that Judge Grease has uh, stumbled on an excellent idea here. And uh, I'm going to finish a sweep of the this apartment. And then uh, we're coming out and we'll regroup downstairs. Uh, you don't find anything else in that apartment. You do find the, the betting slips, which appear to be handwritten. Um, you find a very small amount of kind of food, general belongings, but nothing else of importance. And then it's not on fire from the uh, rocket explosion. The bedrooms, it's smoking a little bit, uh, but I also imagine that your high explosive rounds are very much about force impact and they are about flames because you do have heat, you do have heat seeking and incendiary rounds for that kind of thing. Yes. So, um, I'll just like, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm just going to walk right by Judge Grease and just go outside to meet up with Judge Waits. Ooh, and, you all uh, root downstairs. That whole, that whole uh, situation left me tingling. It's like a scene out of my favorite film, Lethal Hand Cannon. Well, Judge Grease, I appreciate your verve. Uh, it's a good idea to have an informant on the inside who uh, we hopefully will have ultimate leverage over. However, one false move, and I'm going to end that uh, little slip of a man. Sad, really. This is what graft and vice will get you. Is a jelly for a backbone and a monkey sitting on your chest waterboarding you for 119 years in the cubes. Be depressing if it wasn't, well, kind of fun a little bit. But you didn't hear me say that, did you, Grease? Huh? What? What'd you say? Exactly. What is your plan, judges? Well, I've been shot. So I'm going upstairs to the uh, med bay to meet with Jenna and have the bullet removed from my flesh. Okay. Uh, I will say, yeah, you absolutely have time to go and do this. Um, you go upstairs and Jinnar is there, the same kind of ragged uh, blue scrubs um, and the bleach blonde hair tied back. She scrubs up and begins to remove the bullet. She's like, I did warn you guys, people around here don't take kindly to judges. And she's picking away, stitching the flesh up. Here's a good part for a Naomi Watts or a uh, Jennifer Garner type. You know, I'd like to think there's a little bit of sexual tension, uh, you know, between Judge Reinhold and this medic. Not much. I when I, I mean, mm, is there a role for sexual tension, in Virginia? <laughs> I, said I don't like think, think so. <laughs> Judge <laughs> Reinhold can think that there is, if that's the case. Yeah, it's okay if he's wrong. It happens all the time. But uh, yeah, I sit. I sit quietly as uh, Jenna. I, I just don't even say anything to her. If she says that, you know, nothing. It's none of her business. But she patches you up. 
She makes you fill out some forms. And that's you ready and done. She packs you out the door unless there's anything you actually want to say to her. As she's, you can see there are several other people in here waiting for some kind of treatment. You notice she my... still does have a bag of apples. And that the few people in here that are eating them look at uh, devouring these, this fresh fruit that Judge Talon gave to her previously. Thank you for removing the metal pellets from my flesh, Jenna the medic. Uh, tell me, what is the citizenry of, what is this place called? It's a uh, terrace? Free no, Falls. Freedom Falls. Freedom Falls. What would you say the citizenry of Freedom Falls is most in need of as far as aid goes at this time? <laughs> There's a question. Good food? Less drugs, better conditions, a safer mega block. But good food is hard to come by. What they cook in some of the places here isn't great, and it's expensive to buy anything really good or really fresh. I'll work on the food situation. Everything else is being actively investigated at this time by the judges. Why don't you go ahead and spread the word that we're not taking any more crap in Freedom Falls, period. I, I will, Judge. Thank you. And she goes no, off to you. treat what looks to be a, a young boy about 10. Um, and it looks like he's got... Uh, something on the, the side of his face. It's hard to tell if it's like a, a rash or um, like a healing cut or something, but she's tending to him. He's quite happily chomping away at this apple um, as he sits, as she gets him up onto a you know a medical scanner. Um, he appears to be accompanied by another adult, perhaps his mum. Just happily chomping away at this apple, hungrily, but eyes wider than he's ever seen as he looks at the whole bag with this just look of awe as you leave. Judge Talon, what are you doing? Uh, Judge Talon is considering that it's uh, amazing that no one has blown their fingers up yet within this uh, block and these improvised explosives that they've been making um, and is noting the quality and the components and is creating a list of things that uh, the other judges need to be on the lookout for when dealing with other suspects that might indicate that they are also involved in this process of creating these explosives and IEDs and rocket launchers, et cetera, um, cataloging all of that information. Uh, again, making sure that the area is secured and then repainting the shield okay. and eagle on the front of the refuge uh, and doing a requisition for, uh, you know, stuff to replace what's been damaged so that they can uh, reinforce uh, the security to this thing. Uh, and it's also now, um, if, if, still, if she still has time, is getting it back into the computer system and seeing what she can if anybody's tried to take back control of any of the systems and um, kind of digging a little deeper into all of that. Yeah, so you can easily get that information about the explosives and disseminate it to the rest of the judges. Um, you begin a requisition order, which you send off. Um, you hope it will be answered. Judge Grease's requisition has not yet come in either but it has only been the day. So there is still plenty of time for that to arrive. And you do begin painting the shield on. Um, and it doesn't look like anybody's trying to tamper with the lift because it's currently yeah. out of service. Thanks to Judge Grace. And then she's gonna sit down with her tools and fix her helmet if she can repair it. So that at least she's got in-help comms back. 
Sure, just make me a, a logic test with like electronics or computers, anything that you've got like that. Uh, nope, just explosives, toxicology, and chemistry. Okay, just straight logic then. Ten. Ten. You get it mostly working. It's still really crackly, um, but you do manage to get just enough for it to be functional for you. Perhaps when Judge Grease's requisition comes in, you can better repair it. And tell us Judge Grease to take a look at it if he gets a chance as well. Yeah. What are you all doing now? What is your plan? I want to go downstairs and talk to Judge Talon. Okay. And uh, um, when I... Go ahead. Judge Grease wants to go check out the arcade. Okay, and how about Judge Waits? What is she doing? Judge Waits would be working on a plan for the arcade. Basically, as an assault, she'd be planning a requisition for more advanced weaponry and defenses for the judges. Having a feeling it was not going to be a good place to walk into. I think she's isolated herself to some degree. And she's cleaned up. Yeah, she would also have taken an opportunity to basically use the restroom and scrubbed as best she could her face. She could write off what's on her uniform because the perp was bleeding, got on her, but definitely her face would be harder to explain. So she's cleaned that up. But as usual, Waits is very into her helmet and does use it nearly constantly down over her face. Mm hmm. Yeah, so you clean that up, you make that requisition, and you just have to wait for it to come through now. So you did know a little bit about the arcade that you got told um, from a few people, in that whilst it is kind of described as the, the red light district of the area, you know, the, the height of drugs and prostitution, illegal betting and gambling, um, that there is some of it that is, you know, families opening up food stalls because they were bombed out in the downstairs atrium. Um, that you know some of it was just having rec rooms for people and that actually not all of it was quite as bad and as seedy as people make out but that is a large part of it you also know what floor it's on it is on floor 34 it's the floor in the elevator that was marked with the little purple um dots with the yellow ring around the outside but just reinhold you wanted to come down to see judge talon did. I did. What, what do I find her doing? Uh, just tell me. I imagine this is the like the miss of you finishing up fixing your helmet. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, it's been cleared. There's a nice shiny painted shield and eagle back on the front of the refuge. Uh, door open and closes and can be barred. Uh, Judge Talon, a word? Certainly here let's go inside hi I step in and remove my helmet and of course uh, judge Reinhold has three eyes they got this uh, in case anybody was wondering what's going on and uh, he's looking around with all three of his eyes and uh, judge Talon uh, after the uh, events of uh, today I can tell that pulling evil from Freedom Falls is going to be like deveining a shrimp. I'm going to have to rip it, rip evil right out of the middle of this place, and all will be left is the tender, juicy flesh of justice. All that said, it's I'm easier. getting pretty hungry for lunch. I don't eat from the crock pot. Okay, I won't eat from the crock pot. Here's my point, is not that I want lunch. The point is that there is a hunger strike, in, uh, or no, not a hunger strike, but a, a hunger uh, crisis in Freedom Falls. Uh, as, I may, as I may have maintained during the enti our entire mission, getting the public and the non-criminal uh, population of Freedom Falls 
on our side is nearly as crucial as stamping out uh, the criminal element in this block. You are uniquely like qualified the, to like deal the food with the I was food giving away. Like, like the food I was handing out and the apples that I gave to Donna already? Those apples were from you? Yes. It's going to take a lot more than a bag of apples. We need to see about I feeding can... this block. Now, you're a judge, and you do not have time to run a soup kitchen. I'm just putting forth that it is a priority for us to figure out a way to try to feed these right. people, and it could draw out the criminal element. That that is some that is some next level thinking there, Judge Reinhold. Um, I'm I'm impressed. Um, the, you know, the lawmaster. There's only so much room for groceries um, on it. So, how do you propose we go about this? I think we have to request uh, food aid. We bring the truck in. We set something up and make a big show out of it. What are these criminals who've locked themselves upstairs eating? Drugs? They've got to be starving, right? Well, or that's how you get garden, them out. Is you... No, you cut off their source of food. You starve them out. That's how you do it. That's part of why the elevators will no longer go to those floors. It will bypass them. It makes it harder. What you do is you find the people who's had their shops blown out, repair them, get them the resources that they need to open them back up for themselves. Meanwhile, setting up temporary food supplies and, uh, for those until that can happen. Judge Talon, I may have uh, looked sideways at your culinary uh, enthusiasm. Uh, during this mission up to this point. Uh, but I think I was hasty. I think this is a crucial way to combat the criminal element here. Uh, we want the good people of Freedom Falls telling us what they know. And they can't do it if they're and cooperating with us. And they can't do it if they're starving. Exactly. Yes. Um, so let's create, let's get a requisition in for food and start fully adding things to the rack form <laughs> um okay. and it, it it's a mega shopping list you do also have enough food to feed a division uh some some of the people whose shops were bombed out downstairs are selling food from the arcade as well so somewhere someone is getting resources and food in for that kind of thing so we need but to talk to those people but Judge Garish, you wanted to go and visit the arcade. Are you taking your fellow judges with you? Um, he's gonna make it like he's gonna walk by all of them and says, "I'm gonna go to the uh, arcade. Um, catch you guys uh, in a bit." But he's gonna be in, in civvies. He's not gonna go in his judge uniform. He just looks like a normal chimp. He's got like his little duster on with a little button up white shirt, red tie. He looks he looks pretty nice. He looks like a amateur PI. But okay. he like goes over and grabs a little trilby and put puts it on his head. Uh head and he's going to make his way to the arcade. He's going to announce that he's going. Judge Grease, what is your plan? Recon the best kind. I can care. We need more information. I shall attend with you. Uh, not like that, you not. Judge Grease, oh, I was a street judge. I am capable of pretending not to be a judge. Okay, can you at least not look like a judge? Give me five minutes. You got three. Judge okay, Grease, I am the law. The okay, law requires got... five minutes. Okay. You got five minutes. I'm going to ask, do either of you bring your lawgivers with you? Yes. Mm. Yeah, Grease is, but he's going to try to 
stuff it somewhere. Okay. God, what is with that? <laughs> he's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna. He's got like. A, I feel like he has. A, oh, I get it. An under holster, an underarm holster, and he's gonna put it there. Sure. And Judge Wait, what are you getting changed into? How are you hiding your lawgiver? Uh, so she'll strip off the heavier parts of the armor and the helmet. She'll uh, kind of ruffle up her hair. She's been observing the people here and they're mostly kind of unkempt and she'll attempt to mimic that. I imagine underneath the uniform there's some sort of like undershirt, a dark colored one. So she'll kind of half tuck that. And it, where it's half tuck in that tuck, that's where she's going to hide the lawgiver in the baggy fabric. Okay. It, it would not pass a close inspection, but she's not too worried about that. Okay. And Josh Reinhold, are you joining this little expedition to the arcade? Or I'm, have you got other plans? I am frowning at them because I just want to make clear that this is a terrible idea. The likelihood of both of you being murdered or getting into a situation where the other judges cannot help you is high. That said, I'm going with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you then find out who, uh, from the people who are running the food stands, who their suppliers are and what they could use more of? You know what? Since three of us are going, you can ask them. And you, Triclops, go put on a bandana. Uh, I'm going to be cooking up and serving out food here. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm going to stay with refuge. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Judge All right. Talon, I am not certain it is wise for you to be alone. Uh huh. Judge Reinhold, <laughs> please assist Judge Talon here. Dutch Talon holds up a bottle of explosives. I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'll patrol outside. The people who, the perpetrators of the, this morning's explosion, used an improvised, uh, you know, rocket launcher. They're not. These are not well armed uh, criminals, as far as who is roaming the halls of Freedom Falls. The real deal. It's upstairs. If you guys are going in civvies and going undercover and inspecting the arcade, find out what they're eating, what they're selling. So have a look at the buffet and uh, don't stay too long and just get a sense of it. And then we will reconnoiter back down here and you just radio 911 if the shit goes down. I'm not familiar with that code. Oh, is that not the uh, emergency? You tell me. If somebody if uh, goes sideways, Talon and I will be right there. So, Judge okay. Talon and Judge Reinhold, you stay behind, and I imagine Judge Reinhold, you might help out a little bit with this this food kitchen. Um, Judge Waits and Judge Grease, tucking your lawgivers away. You have to take the stairs up because the lift still doesn't work as the cables have been cut um, and you walk your way up to level 34 to the arcade and there's no indication when you first get here that this is what it's advertised to you as have been apart from a sign on the wall that's been spray painted in bright purple that just says arcade with an arrow and coming out onto the main bit, uh, which l overlooks that bottom atrium, there isn't anything exciting here. It's just a normal floor. But you can hear the rumblings of voices and people and music somewhere off in the distance. And as you wander down the maze of corridors, you start to see lights. This purple glow where it looks like the strip lights have been colored or had something put over them to give it this purple glow and you start making your way towards there and as you do the noise picks up the corridors almost begin to feel like streets there are people here coming in and out various rooms 
uh, what would be normally housing are now opened up and you can see inside as you walk past some um, what would have been rooms for apartments it looks like walls have been haphazardly knocked through in places to open them up um you walk plus one place where tridy which is uh for anyone who doesn't know uh it's like television um there are several screens across the walls with people sitting and watching and somebody taking payment on the door for them to come in and do this um you can see that there are some places where it looks like there are makeshift kitchens inside these rooms and people have set up in front of the doors these great food stalls that they're coming out and buying and it's like people are eating street food inside um it's its own little you know you expect to see this outside not within the mega block of a city um off in the distance you can hear cheers there are all sorts of things there are neon signs that have been hooked up into the electricity here um you can see agrobots is advertised down one of these corridors which feels more like an alleyway now and although it's not ram packed for the people it's busy enough here and nobody looks twice at you being here um you do notice a few people come past um who appear at a glance to be sporting um, heavy tattoos you do spot the um, the cage viper tattoo on a couple of people here and there they don't appear to be doing anything at the moment aside from going in and out of some of these establishments um, you do notice that there is um, up ahead there is a woman in front of you who's wearing a top that's secured around the neck but has no real back and she's got the tattoo of something where her shoulder blades are um but it's hard to make out what it is it looks like two shapes down the side right where the the shoulder blades meet into the back but it's kind of hard to tell what they are um it is a mixture of things up here you can see people openly within the corridors buying drugs there are clearly establishments which are here for the purposes of prostitution um that people are going into and out of there is even a face change clinic advertised in a neon sign across here what is it you're actually looking for trying to investigate well, uh, Waits is using all of her stealth skills to just move amongst the crowd and make mental notes of buildings. And if there are particular individuals, like the woman you described with the tattoo, is making mental notes of their description. And she's very focused on that. And she'll just be moving and doing that thing where you see someone in a crowd for a second and then they've moved on, trying to basically avoid being easy to follow. It doesn't appear that anyone's following you. People are here going about their business. A couple of people do kind of, who appear to be on some kind of substance, um, you know, do appear to you know just walk past, chat to you, hi. There's some people here that are clearly drunk. Um, there are more than several people smoking cigarettes, despite the fact that tobacco is a heavily controlled substance um, and possession of it does carry an ISO queue time. Um, but no one appears to be following you. Nobody looks twice. Um, you can see people, um, you know, out on these tables almost openly. It's so brazen. It's almost probably unbelievable to you more than Judge Grease. You know, that drug that you saw, Cinemo, you spot people with it here. Um, it looks like there is uh, a section that people are in where there's a couple of people sitting down taking it that appear to just be kind of relaxed out in a chair eyes wide open staring at the screen but you can start cataloging you do see these tattoos you do see occasionally a few people with the vipers not many and a couple of times it's the same person but you do see a few people anyone who's got backless tops you see a few of these strange markings, these strange marking tattoos on the shoulder blades. Uh, Grease is going to go up to a group of uh, vipers. One of, like, a few of them are smoking, and then he's going to yeah. go up to one of them and says, 
Hey, could I, uh, could I bum a smoke off you? And the group that you walk up to, there's um, two women there who have got hair pulled back um, into this kind of almost like foam mohawk style. Uh, there's another one with kind of longer curly hair and a gentleman with them and they're, they're having a conversation they, they don't appear to be doing anything wrong aside from the fact they're smoking cigarettes and you know you walk up to them and they they look at you like huh i don't see many of your kind around here no especially not me i just got out of the iso cubes uh judges eh yeah tampering with judge tech sucks with Almost Judge had it Tech. too. Lucky yeah. didn't blow your fingers off. A couple of our guys. You know, they're guns, you know, man. I don't know what they do to them, but you try and use them. Nah. You heard about the ones that have moved in downstairs. Yeah. Hmm? I'm sorry. You heard about the ones it? that have moved in downstairs. Five, oh, yeah, them, yeah, apparently. yeah. They just uh, threw me into this, uh, this mega block today, and then all of a sudden, this entire building explodes. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it's funny. Apparently one of them's a chimp. <laughs> chimp, a chimp judge, are you? Chimp are you is a judge. <laughs> chimp uh. judges. You know. Okay, <laughs> double for that, just for the fun of it. Uh, so can I get that smoke? Uh, I mean, you can. It'll cost you ten credits. Nothing rounds here free. I just got out of the ISO cubes. I don't got no acids. You know what? How about this? You tell me where I can get work. Do you got? Do you know anybody who wants a a tech boy? I can ask around, but I don't know who you are. My name is Marlin. Marlin Brando. Marlin. I remember that. What floor are you on? Uh, 27. 27. Hmm. I've got I know, some friends on 27. I, I know Judge Tech. If, they, if that helps. It's like my bread and butter. And he... He like pulls out his lawgiver. This one I rigged myself. It works for me. You did that? You want you wanna see? Man, don't bring that out here. Someone'll kill you for that. I'd kill you for that. I know. But somebody who can get around the biometric scanner of a of a tech lawgiver that has to be useful why would somebody want to kill me mm. and he's like he goes over and he whispers uh uh rubber ricochet into the lawgiver and he points it at a wall and fires it she watches she hands you a cigarette she looks at the other two. Go get Janie. Now. Tell her there's a chimp here to see her. Not just any chimp. You could call me the head ape. And he lights the, uh, the cigarette. You wait here. You wait here with me. Okay. I like you. I like you too. What is your name? My name's Annalise. Annalise? That's a beautiful name. Well, I guess my mom hoped better for me than uh, what I turned out to be, but wait here. If you screw them with me, though. Oh, no. I don't screw with people. That's the number one rule where I'm from. You don't screw your friends. I ain't friends yet, friend. but you're, you're getting there. Especially if you can help us get around this uh, judge tech. Can't even get up to ISO 59 now without taking the stairs. It's causing some real problems already. They've been here five minutes. And you stand and have the cigarette and wait 
to somebody called Janie. I, uh, uh, Josh waits. Oh, sorry, Zippy, go on. I tap on my communicator, because I feel like we have some type of way of communicating, because we obviously split up. Sure. And I radio into waits and say, ah, oh, man. Just like he's just talking to himself, he's not really making, he's not really saying weights or anything, he just kind of clicks it on. Man, I really uh, hope Annalise uh, gets here soon with Janie of the Vipers. Copy and that, he clicks Grace. It off. What are you doing, Judge Waits? Waits is still in observation, but she noticed that Grease had stopped and she's paced a way off and is noting the rest of the block, but it's going to find a way to kind of circle back to be kind of within at least a sprint distance of Grease. Yeah. But she'll be kind of looking at stalls, looking at posters and graffiti on the wall, and She'll be presenting herself as if she's waiting for someone. Not looking for someone, but waiting for someone. Sure. You hear all sorts of things. You see lots of posters. Um, some movie posters, it looks like someone's just kind of stuck up to fill a space. There is graffiti here. Most of it is just rubbish that's been written on the walls. Or, you know, it, it doesn't appear to mean anything. There's a couple of gang signs but nothing massively overt it almost feels like this is a little bit of neutral ground to some degree um you do hear some people walking past going huh heard that uh slip and his boys didn't manage to get any of those judges i had a bet on as well i lost 400 credits to that i was sure that explosive would take him out but uh Looks like Slip did his usual thing and slipped right away. And it's just a, you know, a couple of people going past and go, uh, oh well, I guess I'll go see Serena, put a bet on for something else, make my money back somewhere. And under her breath, she whispers the judgment that she wishes she could give each of these people. But she remains still and quiet. Seemingly paying um, them their attention. Yeah. There's the where you appear to be standing is what seems to be the corner of some kind of betting shop as well. Um, you can see people going in, coming out. Some people look like they've won, some people look like they've really lost. Um, and um welcome to Variant Rolls Rating with a party of fifteen, and we are playing some Judge Dread right now. We're up on an arcade level of a mega city shit block doing some <laughs> recon. Um, but yeah, you can hear a couple of people, damn, Serena screwed me again, this kind of thing. Um, Judge Talon and Judge Reinhold, please tell me, what have you prepared for this kind of soup kitchen that you've opened up on this level? Probably a stew. I mean, if not a soup, it would be a stew. It's you can throw anything in it and stretch it as far as you need to and it's, okay. it's a hot meal i imagine that by this time you've just got it ready you've just started to set up and there's the sound of ringing just a that sound the sound of metal against something coming through the door and you look over you don't see anything over the counter. There's no person there. But, you know, the door is open as you've left it so that you can bring stuff in and out. But there's no one there. And then you hear the strange sound again. Just the... Do I recognize? Does, does it sound like anything in particular? Is it keys? Is it coins? Is it's it... It's not like keys. Uh... It's something metallic. And it's getting closer, but you still can't see anything as you look out from behind your counter. And I'm out on patrol or am I in the room? Uh, that's up to you. I think I'm out walking around. You're out walking around and I imagine you come back and 
you know, I imagine you've just been looking over at the atrium when you heard the same kind of behind you, but by the time that you've looked, there's nothing there. Hmm. I'm going to go back to the uh, base. It's time to meditate for 20 minutes. Okay, right, you head. Talon's going to come. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. You come back to base, Talon. You coming out from around the counter. Yeah. Just as you do, Judge Reinhold appears in the doorway. But down at your feet, looking at you expectantly, is a small, quite fairly healthy looking dog. And a little collar that's jingling. With a little tag on it. Scruffy looking though. Uncared for, but clearly has been fed. Looking up at you, expectantly. Looking around the room, sniffing at the air. Ah. Ladle up a, uh, some of the stew into a sauce, onto a saucer a plate instead of into a bowl so it cools off rapidly. Um, sets it down. As you, as you go over, it follows you expectantly looking up at you and then does that thing that dogs do where they follow the bowl all the way to the floor and laps at it very quickly, eats it up and then plods over to you, Judge Reinhold, sniffs around your boots. Judge Talon, if you feed it, leg. if you feed it, it will only come back here looking for more. It kind of like you, Judge. You can see it will micturate. It, it will micturate on the furniture to show dominance. We don't you can have see. furniture. <laughs> you can see around. It's it's got a really scruffy old leather collar on, and it looks like a kind of makeshift tag, as it kind of just plods around, sniffing at things, plods back over to you, Talon, and just kind of sits there expectantly and just looks around sits there put down some water scratch between the ears and then just continue on as if this is perfectly normal uh, carrying the stew out and uh, kind of uh, you know setting up get everything set up with the stew and bowls and things like that and then uh, we'll go knock on the closest two or three doors in the corridor yeah. and uh wait for somebody to answer you do like, that shout and... at you. <laughs> like shout at you as you go by like where are you, where are you going the, 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 you can't just leave it in here and, and you watch as this, this dog uh, this corgi like dog pods over to the entrance way and sits itself down and just waits and watches Talon as she goes to knock on one of the doors and uh, I imagine that Janna comes down from upstairs to help as well as a few people arrive and this dog does not leave this door this doorway it sits there and it watches everybody and when talon goes in to go and get more soup it follows her and it comes back and when judge reinhold goes around the room or, or takes out it follows you for a bit until you go far enough and then it makes its way back and sits again by the door watching and you see many people come up, most of them families with children, um, you know, taking as much as they can, hungry, thanking you. Um, you even spot a few people who, um, you know, look like they have got some of these perhaps gang related tattoos. You can see um, there is uh, a man who is, he's come out shirtless. Um, but with trousers on and he's got these tattoos over where his shoulder blades would be and there's him there's another another guy and two teenage boys that come out and take some of this soup and this goes back talent is getting names of everybody that's coming out getting to know these people so it's like she's, hol she's holding a bowl of soup as hi your your name and apartment number and she's handing them a bowl of soup 
and for the most part they tell you many of them have got nicknames or names that they prefer to go by you're pretty sure some of them are giving you false names most okay. people will give you the apartment numbers some people you know claim they can't read the numbers or they don't know their apartments never had them um and the whole time oh, we'll this fix dog that. Just... No. don't worry we'll fix that the whole time this dog just sits there and watches and every once in a while talon just throws a scrap at the dog um and it'll sit it there and eat it it plods over to judge reinhold sniffs around the boots again scratches at your leg when it gets nothing it plods back down and i'm effectively providing you know security for all of this you know i'm walking around i'm scowling at people i'm watching the door i'm i'm keeping an eye on these big tough guys moving around okay and what happens when she asks about ask them for their name and apartment uh, the ones with the tattoos and the shoulder blades mm-hmm. um they give you what is very much to you a fake nickname and we've seen the graffiti for the wings though right is that what these uh, look like is that graffiti so the graffiti that you saw for what was called the wing clipper clan um mm -hmm. was a feather that's what was spray painted on the walls uh just make me okay. a logic test um either reinhold or talent or both of you if you want to Would perception come in on this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 21. you both, you both figure this out. You've both heard the phrase um, that your shoulder blades are where you once had wings. That old myth that survived. Um, you know, the kind of thing you tell to kids to inspire them and give them hope. The tattoos that you're seeing very much remind you of what it would look like if somebody had wings and they were clipped. They're almost tattooed as if they're scars in that same place. Make some mental note and then when possible we'll write that down. Um, and it's going to actually be watching to see which apartments they head back to. Yeah. You, you go to write that down, you grab some paper, you go looking for a pen. And then it's, you know, this dog with its little dog tag rattling comes up with a pen in its mouth to you. Drops it at your feet. Pushes it with its nose towards you. Looks up. At this point, I'm gonna scoop the dog up and while I'm petting it, I'm actually going to be checking to see if this is an actual animal or if this is robotics of some kind. Okay, uh, make me. You tell me what you wanna what you wanna test to do this. Oh, uh, let me see. Um, so let's go with log. Let's go with logic and perception again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be my best bet. Nineteen. Nineteen. This is a living, breathing doggo. <laughs> this is a real animal. It is alive. Its dog tag reads the name Tetley. Like Tetley hey, T? Yeah, I know. Let's think think the same thing. Oh, it, um, does this dog have an actual license? I mean, is this a licensed pet? Um, you scan it. It's not chipped. It doesn't appear to have an owner registered to it that you can find because it's not chipped. But it seems very comfortable in this room. I'd make a note to talk to Jenna about this later, but I'm going to look at Reinhold and say, can you um, sense anything unusual about this dog? 
Hmm. I like walk over to it. I'm like put my hand on its sides of its head. I'm like these are uh, very uh, improvisational, highly resourceful criminals we're dealing with. They could have inserted an explosive device into this animal's anus or stomach. Uh, we'll need to be extremely careful and scan it at some point. Also, this animal is interrupting my afternoon meditation. And then at that <laughs> point, I'm going to... See, I, again, I really need to read the damn book because I'm not sure like everything I can do with my psychic abilities. And so I do have a point in telepathy. So I did I it last say... time where I kind of reach out yeah make a make a side check with your telepathy this is going to be difficult though it depends on what you're trying to get from the dog oh you know answers I'm trying to get answers from the dog something it's not easy all right wait no that's three that's four five oh so it is oh look out five d6 hot hot one 16. okay Ugh. you're not really oh. sure what you're gonna do here but you reach out to this dog and you Close your eyes, your third eye opens up. You're hungry? Hungry. It's a feeling that you get. Hungry and hmm, that's that's nice. And as you open your eye, you can see Talon is scratching the dog while you're doing this. You try and push deep and it's hard. You're not used to looking into an animal's mind. You're not used to trying to open up the psychic connection you have like that. But what you do see is the flashes of a judge's boots. You see the wrist cuffs coming down towards your vision as a hand moves over. You hear a voice. You can't make out what it is. You realise that you're looking through this dog's eyes in this moment. And the room that it's in is the room that you are standing in, Judge Reinhold. But there's more furniture here as it pads over to what looks like a little dog bed of some kind. And as it looks up, you can't see the face, but you can see the uniform body from kind of the chest down of what looks to be a judge. And there's a second voice coming from somewhere else. And that's all you can get in that moment. As you open your eyes and the dog is, you know, you're trying to hold on to it as it's lapping at Judge Talon's face, trying to get under the helmet. Immediately let go of the dog and step back. This animal, this animal is the last survivor of the attack on this base. This was their dog. They kept it as a pet before they were annihilated. Also, it's hungry. But we knew that. Talon, the dog in your lap kind of twists it out of your arms gently, plops down to the floor and pads over to you, Judge Reinhold. Sits there. And just like it did in what you saw, a much smaller dog then, you realise. It just kind of bats at your leg and looks up at you expectantly, the little dog collar shaking. No. Wait, so there's two dogs? No, just the one. No. Okay, good. Alright, good. Um, I don't react at all. I don't touch it. I don't pet it. I'd prefer it not scratch my boots. Talon um, hands you just... Hold on, just give the dog food. I'm busy here. And <laughs> goes back to feeding people. Or is, is I'm just holding out a saucer of food toward it. Just give the dog the food so I can go back to doing what I need to do. All right. Look at, the, look at it and look at you and then look at the dog and be like, I do this to honor the memory of my fallen brother and sister judges. And as you reach Close down enough. to give as you reach down to give it the food, it, it goes over and it just catches, giving you a little lick across the hand, as you yeah. do, and goes to just lap up the food happily. Some hand sanitizer, disinfectant, something. Talon, go look in the medicine cabinet. There's hot water what? and soap in the kitchen. It might not be enough, but all right, fine. Talon, a done? few moments. Be done. It looks up at you. 
plods back towards Talon, who's by the front door. And Talon, it's at this point that you watch this dog suddenly become alert. And it's sniffing. And it's looking at everyone who's here. And it starts pacing under the table, sniffing at people. And a few people come, a few more people leave, and then it stops. As if what it's found was gone. But it was alerted to something for a brief moment. To somebody, perhaps. Definitely, um, as soon as the dog started behaving differently, would note who the people were in front of the table. Uh, do me a favor, was... just make me a make me a logic, uh, make me an intuition check, just to see how many of those people you can actually keep that to. Because there's a lot of names and faces you've got right now. Right. Again, does uh, perception come in on this? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you said intuition? Intuition. Okay. They do, of course, use these beasts in police work, but usually they're not adorable. They're more attack bread to kill bread to uh terrify you know different well, breeds. that explains what how you got recruited um 16. you think you could Excuse recognize me? a few of them again okay uh makes a just is again having taken that pen with the paper um kind of out of sight where people who are there at the table can't uh, really see is making quick notes um, okay Noting those people hasn't done it for everybody, but just like the ones with the the tattoos with the clipped wings, those people, the ones that take her interest, um, those are the ones that she's making quick handwritten notes on. Sure, we're going to cut across there, and as you continue this to Judge Waits and Judge Grease, Judge Grease, you have finished your cigarette with this woman. Um, and the other two come back and she says, ah, Jenny will see you. Follow those two. Nice oh, to yeah. meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And Judge White, you can see as you're watching from the distance of one of these corridor corners as two other people appear to Judge Grease and he follows them down a corridor, turning left out of sight. She's going to look at, what is the, um, the landscape here? Like, where's the terrain? Are these, like, stacked apartment buildings? Uh, so if you, I don't know if you've seen the Keith Urban film. No. So it's, it's not so much apartment buildings as it is, like, having hotel rooms. Imagine, okay. like, a hotel room corridor, but it's all made of concrete. So we're in, like, a complex. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um... And he disappears off out of sight around this corner. She will very slowly count to ten and then find an excuse to drift in that direction. You do that, I imagine that you pull out, you know, a vid phone, look at it, get annoyed, and then walk as with some purpose. And you cross the woman that he was speaking to follow down this corridor and f as you turn left you can hear down the end somewhere there's music playing the sound of bass beating through the concrete floor here you get closer and closer and you can see that this corridor opens up into a series of um rooms that would be apartment rooms um that appear to be blacked out there's music coming from them this is some kind of area set up these separate rooms like the rooms of a nightclub the light the purple lighting overhead dulls here um just make me a uh, uh maybe a logic check charlie with perception if you have it okay let me uh, take a look i do have perception i have two dice and perception so that's gonna yeah. mean four dice for me just type that in Ish. Seven. Seven. 
You don't notice this until it's too late, Judge Waits, as you're so intent on keeping an eye out for Judge uh, Grease. It suddenly dawns on you, the graffiti on the walls doesn't look normal anymore. It's glowing. The reason the lighting here is changed, why everything is so dark, which at first you don't notice, you're so used to the dark, is because everything is under UV lights. Everything is glowing like it would in a nightclub. And you are not a fan of UV light, Judge Waits. No, I am not a fan of UV lights, Game Master. And you suddenly realise you are two corridors into this. There's the blare of music, people drunk, um, intoxicated on God knows what substances, moving between these rooms, and you are trapped between them as the lights overhead you realise are UV. And the lights within the bits of the nightclub are UV. You have a choice. Because UV affects you, doesn't it, Charlie? It does. Let me check my sheet for the exact wording on the badness that is UV light. Um, so as part of my mutant, I have a great sensitivity and I suffer minus 1d6 in to my perception checks in daylight, which I imagine also applies to UV. And it's very bad if I don't consume blood as well. But luckily, I did have a drink today. You did. And that's probably the reason that you can stand to be here. But it's up to you if you choose to stay here. But you can see as you're trying to follow Judge Grease. Uh, Judge Grease, you're being led deeper and deeper into this nightclub-like complex of corridors. Until you're brought to a room. And while much, most of the other doors are open and they're playing all sorts of music... Um, this door is closed. There is a knock. The door is opened. And sitting at the other end of the room is a woman behind a desk. The lights are low. There's a plush red sofa. Judge waits. You just get a glimpse inside of this room. This woman Judge Grease being ushered in with the door shut behind him as these two people wait outside like guards. And to maintain her cover, she'll just continue on as if this hadn't been anything of interest. If they look too close, they'll see that under the UV light, her veins are a deep black. It's a very good way to spot a vampire is to sit them under ultraviolet. Mm-hmm. And you try to blend in closer with the nightclub crowd, perhaps to go in from a different vantage point. And I think that is where we will leave it for tonight, with Judge Grease as you are invited into this office. Judge Waits struggling under the UV light to keep an eye on her fellow judge. Judge Talon with a list of names and a dog that seems to have reacted strangely seeming having been here before, and Judge Reinhold, probably with more questions than answers at this point. However, there are, there are one or two things to clear up. First of all, I think you get another point on your law meter because of yeah. the soup kitchen and the fact that you did actually catch the pup who had the, um, the explosives. And you managed to make him a contact. So thank you for that, Zippy, because you made it very easy to to do the uh, the vote for chat. Nice. Um, awesome. So I'm going to say, yeah, you've brought a little bit more order here. You're starting to starting to get there. There's still a long way to go, though. Um, Talon, I will make sure to give you a list of those names for next week as well and hopefully everyone enjoyed it we have got one thing for chat to vote on don't we charlie we, we do. have judge and of the week judge of the week i will go and get that poll going very shortly <laughs> um while that is about to kick off why don't we go around say who we are where we can find ourselves and our favorite moments on today's show 
very quickly, Charlie, I just want to let chat know that Judge of the Week this week, because it's slightly different every week, will be getting a skill increase of one point, and they'll also get a narrative boon in game. So. Uh, big points mean big prizes, friends. There we go. And that is a going. So it's exclamation point vote space. And then the number of your judge of choice. We have weights at zero. Talon is one. Greece is two. And Reinhold is three. So get those votes in. Oh, someone's asking, can we vote for Tetley? Tetley is not a judge. If somebody Tetley decides to try is... and make him a judge, that's a whole other thing. Not yet. Tetley is always doggo of the week. Tetley is always doggo of the week. That'll work. That'll work. Uh, so let's go around and Cleric, how are you doing? What were your favorite moments this week? Oh, uh, so many, so many. Um, I adore Judge Grease. I think it's the best judge of all of us. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. And that he's just, I mean, wow. You play the way you play him and what I, I love it. Um, it's great. I really, really am loving it. Um, the, the feet on the neck. Yes. I got, <laughs> I got great. four thumbs. I got to use them <laughs> somehow. And I love it. That's awesome. Who needs a tail when you have four thumbs? Um, so, hi, I'm Kat. I'm a cleric of Cord. Um, Judge Talon, who is now running a soup kitchen in this in Freedom Falls, and I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> and has a doggo. Um, I have a pin tweet telling you where I'm at during this week. I've got a couple of uh, charity one shots coming up this month, um, as well as the meat grinder on the 28th. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back here next Friday, uh, bringing the law and food to Freedom Falls. The law and food, everything we need on a Friday. And don't forget to check out that meat grinder. You in chat, whether you are watching on YouTube or watching live right now on Twitch, can join us. Go and join the Discord and you will find a wonderful little channel called Meat Grinder. And you can sign up there to play under DM Donathan Fry on the 28th with a wonderful cast and crew as we fundraise for our cast. Travis, how are you doing today, friend? Man, I'm awesome. Uh, this isn't working. This looks like lips on my forehead, and uh, I mean, that wasn't really the effect, the effect I was going for. I, I look like uh, that, but uh, I'm, I need some green duct tape. So this is an evolving thing, just like the character. I'm still kind of figuring this guy out, and uh, we made some really cool progress uh, this week. Uh, I liked the dog. Uh, I still am not convinced that it doesn't have an explosive device in its anus and i think that the mvp uh is absolutely grease i think we all fell in love with uh judge grease today uh he's the feel-good uh movie of the year and uh yes and the soup kitchen thing was great and it's just a lot of fun i'm a producer trav in an hour and 10 minutes i'm going to be dming an alien rpg game which is actually kind of an alien Blade Runner just movie mashup thing in the free league system that hasn't come out yet. So check it out at, at Love Lindy's channel. And it's going to be good times with some aliens and some face huggers and some surprises. So thank you for having me. And I can't wait for next Friday. Woo. I think you're muted, Charlie. Charlie. Definitely go and check that out. There we go. I found my button. Um, go and shout out to Laugh Love Lindy as well. Wonderful member of our cast. And in a few weeks, you can see us playing Alien here on Encounter Roleplay under Travis's supervision. So that is coming up. Something to look forward to. Something I always look forward to is playing with Zippy Zippo, who, as everyone has said, has brought the Grease love today. Grease is the word. How are you doing? Grease friend? is the word. I I had fun. I uh, I really had fun. I I didn't know what I was do like doing, so I was just kind of going with the flow. So, but I had fun. I thought it was uh, cool. Um, I did some more reading and like the monkeys. Like they watch movies, so I was like, well, 
Greece would react to everything as if it was a movie. So we're going to drive the plot home. It's great. Uh, I love the soup kitchen. I'm glad we have a doggo. Uh, definitely going to make it a mech suit. So it could be like a viper killing doggo. Yeah. We'll make it a, a Jaeger. Let's do it. Guys, donate so we can get a Jaeger for Tetley. You know you want it. You know you want to see a little Corgi piloting a Jaeger blowing shit up. I know you. I am you. We are this one. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. Dreams of Judge Dredd in 20,000 AD featuring Tetley. For anyone who doesn't know who Tetley is, I will give you some context. Go and check out <laughs> Acton Cthulhu over on the Encounter Roleplay YouTube and meet Tetley the Corgi in his 1930s Incarnation. Tatley Sherman, the Iron Corgi. <laughs> yeah. They're just corgis with laser eyes. That's not in this book. That's all I'm saying. I don't see anything about <laughs> corgis. Chat voted. The chat shall be obeyed. So keep an you eye got, out for polls got, in the future. Yeah, you got a doggo because of chat. So. Zippy, thank you, chat. anything you would like to plug today? Uh, I haven't been streaming a lot due to university, but I do stream. You can find me here on twitch.tv slash the zippy zippo. We do a lot of things, MMOs. Uh, I think we're slogging through Greedfall. We might go back to WoW Classic. Greedfall is like, okay. But, uh, yeah. It's pretty so, good. There you go. Go and check out Zippy over there. Virginia, thank you so much for being our wonderful games master tonight. Thank Had you again for having me. This was really fun to play. Uh, thank you, chat, for voting for a doggo. This started as a joke with Charlie when I told what the whole was, and you know it's been a it's been a long week, and I was like, I'm tempted just to add on like doggo who is the best boy, and Charlie was like, it's Friday, let's put it in the poll, and I was like, sure. Uh, and Charlie said the dog had to count for the plot. The dog will count for the plot, because dogs are always important, and I will always write them into my games should they be asked for. So, oh my god, there's a real doggo! Aww. Shout out to uh, all of the street Zoe. pets. Um, yeah, I really hope you guys all had fun. I was looking forward to showing off the arcade this week, because I think it's really cool. There's so much stuff going on there. There's a lot that you can do and have a look in. I love the soup kitchen. That was just brilliant and as soon as you said it i was like i know when the dog's coming in it's gonna be drawn by the smell of that soup um but yeah i'm really excited i like how you guys are progressing this i'm super surprised i thought that perhaps you'd go on like hardcore judges you know go in guns drawn and you you kind of haven't you've been really clever about it all as well with enough of kind of a hard hitting showing the perps that you mean business uh Oh, I've never seen you lot of brilliant. Um, and chat is awesome. Also, if we want a mech suit for Tetley, I'll, you can buy people crit successes, you know, and those crit successes are auto successes. So, you, 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 want, a, <laughs> you, know, you want a mech suit for the, the doggo? Get somebody who's making it a crit success, I guess. It's not in here. It's not in here. <laughs> Travis, there is no escape. I'll get a mech suit before that dog does. <laughs> I, I think Talon and Greece have a new project. <laughs> Not for accumulation. Uh, <laughs> Virginia did a great but, job tonight and really kept, if I may, it really kept a really good rhythm and also did a really great job of like parsing out information without getting ahead of it, which is something I do all the time is like telling the characters too much. And it's something I really need to remember tonight when I'm DMing, so I'm glad I had warm-up today, so just, it was awesome. Thank you. Now, you guys roleplay so well, so it's like I have to find, I have to remember to get you guys to roll dice, because you just convince me of something. I'm like, I don't, I don't need to roll for that, that was really good. And I'm like, I probably should make them roll some dice, though, because, you know, rolling dice and there are skill tests and stuff, but you guys are awesome. And I think this is a good way, talking about awesome, to segue to Charlie. 
Oh, I forgot um, to say, I'm Tabletop Hold on Twitter, by the way. I do a bunch of stuff. I'm going to, going to be on the podcast of Avernus, which you can find over through Wizards of the Coast. And on the 18th of this month, I think, uh, the first episodes of um, De uh, Descended to Avernus through Red Moon Role Playing are there, uh, going up um, on their uh, podcast feed. So please check that out. I'm playing in that. And you can find me and Charlie on Thursdays in after the fire on rpg webby's channel so if you'd like some juicy game of thrones fruits i mean like seriously juicy come come and check it out on a thursday sorry charlie segueing to you the awesome oh. <laughs> very important that everyone says their piece because you know what everyone here worked really hard tonight i had a lot of fun i want to thank chat so much for being here i'd like to announce the chat has voted the judge of the week as judge reinhold so congratulations, Travis, you will be getting that boon. And you're gonna let me know what stat increase you want as well. So one of your stats goes up. Yay. I don't have, so. we gotta redo my character sheet, Virginia, because it's in two <laughs> pieces. We will figure it out. <laughs> but while that is happening, you, I would like to mention that the Patreon is 100% going to support the cast and crew and we will soon be posting a PDF which contains all of our Judge Dread character sheets. So if you would like to play as any of these judges or check those out in more detail, they will be available to you via that for Patreons only. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, so it's well worth it. You also get access to a ton of character art and gifts and votes and things, so please go and check that out, there's a link down below as well as joining our Discord. And if you are on YouTube, please come and watch us live. We are here every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, rocking and rolling here in the Judge Dread universe. Thank you also to Cascadia Gaming Supply for their sponsorship this week. Tabletop Loot, Fancy Grounds, and Wayland Games are ongoing sponsors as well. And I think that is about all I have to say for tonight, but I hope you will be joining us on Monday when we get back to Ravnica and launch into a fresh Encounter Roleplay week. So until then, try not to roll too many nat ones, because we want to be there laughing when you do. Good night, everyone. My name is Jace Bellerin. I am the Living Guild Pact. What makes your plane more worthy than any other? Ravnica can never be free until we stand over the buried body of the Guild Pact. In the name of Mat Celestia, I will shine a light set that gives new life to the Conclave and brings the truth out of darkness. Ravnica and its people deserve peace, and I aim to bring it to them, regardless of what my new patron may want. My life is the sword that will strike down the tyranny that tries to lay shadow over my people. Mortality is trivial. Once I'm deathless, I will restore all.